Hello, I'm Simon Roberts and I work for the Data and Intelligence team within the Improvement Service and um, this is a series of talks, um, bite-sized chunks if you like, on the importance of good data and what that enables. And I'm going to also be joined by my colleagues Ron Wilkinson, also from the Data Intelligence team, and Nick Cassidy, also from the Data and Intelligence team. Hey, I'm Nick Cassidy, I'm Research Manager at the Improvement Service. Why do we need data? So I'm going to start with a quote from uh, former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan. Without good data, we're flying blind. If you can't see it, you can't solve it. And I think that really sums up what I want to discuss in this talk. Certainly the second part of the sentence, um, if you can't see it, you can't solve it. And I think that's the key thing uh, we need to focus on. It's the impact the data has on finding solutions. So it's not just data itself that's important, uh, but what we do with it. Um, there's a lot of data out there. Uh, and it's growing exponentially. So every single day, two and a half quintillion bytes of data are created. Uh, that's enough to fill 10 million Blu-ray discs. And 90% of the world's data is created in the last year. So it's not necessarily just about more data. There's a lot of data out there. It's about good data. Um, the key thing I think is access to the right data and we need intelligence to kind of cut through the mass of available data that there is. Um, and use that to drive uh, improvement. And that's particularly important now uh, as we face an unprecedented challenge as a result of uh, COVID-19. So this, this graph is from um, a report this week by the Office for Budget Responsibility. Um, that report says unemployment could go as high as 13%. Public sector borrowing could be at its highest peacetime level in 300 years. And the annual GDP could see the biggest decline in 300 years as well. So what we're seeing is, is potentially higher levels of demand than we've, we've seen in, in many years and potentially uh, far less resource to meet that demand. So data is really crucial to make sure that we are making decisions that utilise our resources in uh, effective ways. Firstly, we can use data to make sense of where we are, where we've been. Um, and to do that, firstly, we really need to make meaningful comparisons and uh, benchmark good performance. Um, so that could be benchmarking local authorities, it could be different countries, or it could be benchmarking uh, where we are now with, with where we've been in the past. And we do that to understand you know, why performance and outcomes vary uh, and create case studies to show what good performance looks like and how, how good performance has been achieved. Secondly, um, good data should allow us to understand what's happening in local areas um, and to disaggregate uh, from a national or even from a local authority level. National trends can mask individual experiences, they can mask small area experiences, and they can mask interest and relationships as well. The third thing, um, we should be able to provide transparency and accountability, so to understand what's actually happening, what impact the decisions we've made have actually um, had on outcomes. And lastly, um, we can use data to look for patterns and relationships in the data across across the whole system um, to really understand all of the factors that are, are contributing to different outcomes. Um, and this is graph, uh, you may have seen it, is the number of coronavirus virus cases and coronavirus deaths in Scotland uh, going way back to, to March. Um, I think it's a really good example to understand you know, where we've been, where we are, and drive decision making from that. And, Generally, the coronavirus, coronavirus, coronavirus crisis has been um, a good example of using data to drive decision making um, in quite a simple way. So we've seen at UK level, the response has been driven by, by the data uh, with changes in strategy early on. Uh, other countries have, have done the same. So in Sweden, for example, they had quite a loose lockdown at the early stage of the, the crisis. but comparison of their data with um, neighbouring countries, uh, particularly the, the other Nordic countries, showed that their deaths were rising much faster and were not decreasing at the rate they might have expected. And so they brought in more uh, stringent lockdown um, measures in response to that. The next thing we want to do with the data um, is understand where we're going. Um, so that could be understanding if we might have four dozen husbands, um, but more, more, more specifically, to understand the trends that are happening, to benchmark how trends compare with one another, 
to really understand what outcomes are, are going to look like in the future and, and really think about um, future demands and, and for local government that's thinking about demand on, on services particularly if we don't take action um, and then we can use that information as well to kind of drive uh, prevention or other actions to, to help alleviate the last thing we want to do then is, is bring all of that together and get to the, the top of the pyramid and think about how to drive improvement and how we can get to where we want to go. Um, as I said, drawing across the where we've been, we can draw across where we look like we're likely to go to really uh, prioritise outcomes by understanding um, what current performance looks like, to understand what it is we can influence. And to do that, we can understand what works and, and potentially more importantly, uh, what doesn't work to help improve those outcomes. And ultimately, by doing all of that, we can deliver uh, better, we can deliver smarter, more efficient public services by targeting resources uh, in the most effective way. OK, and lastly, in this, this first section, just going to touch on the, the challenges and then what we might need to do. So the challenges and the needs mirror each other. What we need is, is um, solutions to these challenges. So firstly, we need the, the right data. Um, we need data intelligence to, that can underpin decision making, and we need that to focus on improving outcomes. Uh, we need to address a lack of analytical and data skills in the workforce, and that could be through additional training by drawing in skilled employees or even engaging with academia and other experts who have knowledge in this area. The other third thing is, is again, access to that, the right data. So it needs to be robust, it needs to be disaggregated, it needs to be timely, and it needs to be relevant as well to, to what we want to do. It needs to not focus, I suppose, on inputs and outputs, but, but really help us to measure outcomes. And the last thing is um, we need coordination and collaboration across the public sector. Um, coordination really allows all these things to happen. It allows us to bring together data, it lets us pull skills and resources and understand how outcomes are, are linked uh, and how they're changing at different levels, whether it's national or, or locally. As most of you are no doubt aware, um, digital is all many people are talking about nowadays. Um, it's at the forefront of everything we do as public sector bodies. Um, the Scottish Government have written a digital strategy for Scotland and which was published several years ago, and various initiatives uh, are ongoing to fulfil that strategy. However, there's, there's many lines of thought that suggest that perhaps um, Scotland needs to be better at digital, digital governance, and there's various blogs that you can read about on this topic. Um, but we know councils are really keen on this digital progression and this digital evolution as well. However, digital can only happen if we improve data. And there's a lot of concern that our data infrastructure isn't fit for purpose for a new digital future. You may have heard a lot of people talking about the technologies on this slide. These are the latest buzzwords in technology. However, none of this is, is really possible until we improve the data that we're collecting to enable these technologies. If we think about data as a pyramid, at the base of the pyramid, we have lots of data collection initiatives being carried out across all organizations. And as that data is passed up the chain through the pyramid, theoretically, people make more sense of it and feed it up to the top of the pyramid where it is used as evidence for decision making and then theoretically data should inform the learning experience about how to collect data um, collection activities at the bottom of the period at uh, the pyramid so as you can see there are decreasing volumes of data as we go up the pyramid but it becomes far more important and if you don't collect data right from the start of the pyramid it's not going to be fit for purpose for making decisions so data actually becomes a very valuable asset, just like the land and property that we own. And I would argue, why don't we treat it exactly the same as we treat that valuable land and property? It's thought that data is actually 
significantly impacting our productivity. This graph shows what happened after the 2008 crash with regards to productivity in the country. And I would argue that actually the, the use of data and the productivity around data could be partly responsible for this um, lack of increase in productivity since the 2008 crash. And indeed, some people have actually looked into this. This is um, a quote from the Digital Land Review in 2015 that identified that problems around data are actually causing us massive impacts economically. And then if we think about why we have this productivity issue within data, these are just a, a few ideas that I have around it. So structured data versus unstructured data. This is a, a report from Gartner. 80% of the data that we collect is unstructured. So it becomes far more difficult to analyze and use for our evidence making and decision making processes. If we can simply try and um, decrease that the value, uh, uh, sorry, the number of unstructured data um, within our organizations and make it a bit more structured, this will instantly lead to more productivity. As data scientists and, and a data community, we tend to spend a hell of a lot of our time actually finding and accessing and cleaning data before we do anything particularly useful with it. And you can see that in the top right hand um, image there. So we need to think about how we can sort of break this 80-20 rule and start spending more of our time as data experts actually analyzing data and um, using it to, to make better decisions.